left to decay this what you are seeing behind me were the male wards of this hospital so the residents are concerned here that there are no uh, sufficient wards to cater for the residents of Kumbu because the male wards here which was built uh, by the missionaries uh, in the 19, 1929 uh, and also this uh, structure is also built in mud uh, if, if I can also put it out there as well Zinga so this hospital has there have been promises that it was going to be built there is going to be renovated but nothing has come out of, out of it so it has been left to decay it has been left to dilapidate uh, so these are the sad uh, state of affairs here at this hospital. But I am joined uh, by the member of the board at this hospital who do who will articulate those grievances that they do have at this hospital. Uh, Dr. Maginana, uh, if you can tell us what are some of your challenges at this hospital? What do you want to be addressed? Uh, what uh, first of all, let me greet everybody. This hospital's name is Nesenite Hospital, Sulengama in Kumbu, in Eastern Cape. Uh, as you have seen it, it's uh, falling apart. Now, we have been trying since 2015 as a board of this hospital that it be built, but all our attempts have been have failed. Uh, the, 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 the last MEC who thought that it be built was MEC Gobana in 2012. We are told that he arranged or made available a sum of about 300 million so that it be built. And that money only built two platforms, That's just like a tennis uh, ground. Uh, we have approached the MEC, who followed MEC Kobana, MEC Janji, MEC Souls August, and the current MEC. Cindy Swa Gomba. All of them have been here. They have seen it. The chief of staff have been here. They have seen the situation in this hospital. And uh, even the MEC for Public Works has been here. And uh, all of them, they leave us with promises. Have you raised the concerns about the 300 uh, million which was put aside to build a hospital here? No, we never worried about that because we took it, uh, it was hit by lightning. No, we, we never worry about that. We are just fighting for the bad coming budget that let us be provided. Uh, they will promise. Promise the thing is in process, is in procurement, and uh, it's going for tender, and uh, thereafter uh, hit by lightning. You don't, you don't hear a thing. And also one would think that the hospital is now undercapacitated. How is this uh, hospital operating since these wards have been closed down? Yeah, this is terrible here. Yeah. Uh, the community of this district, they are about a million by now because last census was about 880,000. And they depend in this hospital only in, in Kumbu. Uh, the passion of the nurses here, it's wonderful. They, are very, they welcome people very warmly and they treat them very warmly, but the buildings, they are, they are very bad. Do you have enough beds and enough capacity to cater for people, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, during this, uh, no, no, we don't have, we don't have uh, enough uh, uh, beds. Yeah. What we will promise is that there will be a prefab which will be having 200 beds. And uh, when you follow that, nobody talks about it anymore. Now, recently, they were asking us, can... We agree as a board that uh, 500 uh, a bed with, I mean a hospital with uh, 500 beds could be built here. We said yes and then you can't trace it anywhere now, it's just quiet. And uh, in this hospital, <laughs> there was a contractor which was appointed to renovate here and that contractor could not even set a site here and to advise them to cancel their contract, but they never. Until uh, uh, in February 2019, that, can, that contractor, Ketwayo, took all its uh, things and, and, and went away. The department could not, could not cancel that contract.
mm. could not appoint another contractor until now. As I speak, there's no contractor that has been appointed to come and renovate here. As, as someone who sits on the board, yes. what happens in meetings that you sit with the authorities? What do they say? At the board, we do take, uh, we discuss these problems and we take them to the OR uh, Tambo to sit manager and then he takes them to the province. At times, the board decides that let us go and see the MEC or invite MEC. And we do that. We meet them, they come, but there's nothing. Uh, it's, uh, I'm not uh, exaggerating things when I say even the na current national minister, uh, Zelim Kiza, he has been to this hospital, but no results. Other than the, the buildings, all right, let me tell you, one doctor was injured in one of these wards, main ward, because the floor was uh, very old. This hospital was built before 1929 by Dr. Patterson. It started to operate in 1929. Now, other things which are a nuisance, which are a nuisance in this hospital, there's no transversal system here. Anything which needs to be put uh, whether salaries or what, they have to go to Mtata almost every day or it's all um, at, at, at Maliza Hospital. There's no transversal system. We have been trying for this transversal system all these years. I do not know what is the actual problem. And uh, if you get to these awards, during this COVID period, the, the, the oxygen is is utmost important in every hospital. Here there are no outlets of o oxygen in the beds. They will drive those bottles for, for the oxygen. They should be, they should be fitted, but there are no way. And uh, although the hospital says, as far as PPEs, they are comfortable. I am not comfortable because I get complaints from the nurses that they they share some of the PPEs uh, when, when, the, when there's a suspect, a COVID suspect here. This hospital is, is neglected, is not well looked after by the Department of Health. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was the board chairperson, uh, also uh, articulating some of the problems here at this hospital, saying that this hospital has been left to dilapidate, has been left to decay. They've been trying to uh, make uh, the authorities to intervene but no one seems to be interested. They come here and make promises but none of those uh, promises have been met. But I will be joined by the community member also Mr. Ndobe Gosaziwa who is a community leader to just uh, give us uh, a sense of how is this affecting community members here in Nkumbu. Uh, you know our community are so affected by any means. This hospital doesn't have bed at all for COVID-19 patients. Furthermore, there is no proper ward for COVID-19 patients or a specific place where you can put COVID-19 patients. This hospital is really in no condition of having sick people. The face appearance of this hospital is scary. The only thing that you can see coming out from this door is a zombie a mpundulu or a biting snake or a viper snake who can just beat the nurses and doctors who are working here instead of seeing a nurse or a doctor who's motivated by helping our community the government is failing the community you can imagine one million people who depend to this hospital but they don't have a hospital that is a, actually the hospital that's got a capacity to have a people or a patient or COVID-19 patients mm. so we are suffering and the, the surprising part of our Eastern Cape government they are managing to source funds to rent hotels and BNB instead of renovating this hospital this Sulankama hospital need to be renovated a serious one or to rebuild but they don't have that kind of a budget the only thing that they have is the money to source is the money to rent the hotels and bnb it doesn't make sense to me it blows my mind unless those people they are benefiting in this project this COVID 19 is gonna make the government of eastern cape to be rich because they are they are involved in these things
And also, if you can have a word uh, of a request or maybe a plea to the government about the state of affairs at this hospital, what would you like to say? What would you like to see being done here for the residents of this community? I'm pleading to the office of the president, to the president himself. Dr. Mkise, you know this hospital. And we are pleading to the treasurer, a agent intervention to this hospital. We need this hospital. We need beds. There's no beds at all. We need PPE here. The last time I was here, I won't mention the name of the nurse who was wearing a mask for three days. A mask was supposed to be on his mouth for four hours. We are pleading the agent intervention so that we can assist the people of this community. Actually, the government in now of Eastern Cape is failing the community of this uh, Sulengama around, actually the community around the Sulengama hospital. We need a serious intervention. We need a help from the president, from the treasurer. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ntobe Gostaziwa, a community leader. And also we did speak to Mr. Makinana, who is the chairperson of the board of this hospital, saying they have been uh, trying to make uh, authorities to intervene, uh, but nothing has come out of it. So uh, these are uh, some means and also avenues they, they are trying to uh, explore and also because they, they want intervention at this hospital because these wards were closed in 2012 and today it is 2020 and nothing has been done here at this hospital. So those are some of the grievances and the sh sad uh, shocking state of affairs at this hospital saying of course also the COVID-19 was do not have oxygen amongst other things and also uh, also detailing uh, about PPEs as well. So they are saying government needs to come and intervene and also make uh, that stronger uh, intervention instead of making the, that lip, uh, service. Nzinga. Atulia Joka coming to us live from Kumbu in Eastern Cape with that shocking story. It's time for a break. When we come back, we'll have more news for you. Do stay with us on SABC News.